Good evening, everyone. We're just checking everything is up and running and working as it should. Be ready in a moment. Bear with us. Good evening, everyone. We're just checking everything is up and running. Up. Finally, YouTube appeared. That's always good. That's always good. <laughs> We're live over on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and Steam. If you can join us wherever you are, just get my game ready. We'll be with you. Hello, good evening everyone, how are we all? Hello, 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 welcome, welcome, welcome. As you can see, it's not Eric, it is me, Gary, this time. I'm going to be your host, but do not fear, do not worry. We have the wonderful Eric on the line with us, on the comms. Say hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad he did that. I'm so glad he did that. Uh, yes, Eric's going to be here with us on the comms. He's going to be doing my job normally. So, uh, yeah, he's going to be collating all the questions, uh, picking them up as they come in from you wonderful boys and girls. Uh, and then we'll answer them as we normally do every 30 minutes or so. So, uh, yeah, I uh, hope everybody can hear me okay. Everything's working. I can tell seemingly from YouTube on Twitch, Facebook, and Steam. So yeah, if you do want to tag uh, Giraffasaur in with your questions, then please do. That's how we will get notification of those questions as they come in uh, on the various chats. So uh, uh, I'll try and keep up with those as we uh, play through. So what have we got this week? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to continue our Drake playthrough on our Vindicator that we did play a little while ago. Um, I've been saving it and saving it, so we're going to be flying through there doing a variety of missions and jobs and a little bit of story in between, but uh, we may switch the ship, so that'll be entirely up to you guys if you want to uh, to see me fly something different, but uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that in a bit. Uh, we'll also be looking at some community screenshots later on. Uh, we've got an absolute plethora because obviously we're now bi-weekly, so every two weeks we do the dev stream. Uh, we're going to be um, getting quite a few, I think, uh, collecting up over time. So hopefully we'll have some absolute stunners, which I know we do, uh, having looked through them. <laughs> Flory wants to see me fly through Ke in Keone. <laughs> not today, not today. Uh, but we do have some hot topics uh, that we're going to take a look at, and those hot topics are things that uh, myself and Eric and the rest of the team um, do notice uh, are a very popular item, should we say, uh, among the community. We do tell you that we do read, we do listen, we do um, 
uh, taking all the feedback that you boys and girls give us and that's very very much uh, a true thing we do want to know what you're thinking and um there's a few things that we collate there's a few things that we want to touch on and just give you some uh, some feedback on uh, the first thing um is the hotfix that we are still waiting for um in terms of uh, deployment onto consoles and onto xbox game pass uh we've had a couple of issues with certification uh nothing major but it has delayed it somewhat but we're hoping in the coming days you boys and girls will get your hands on it so please uh, do be a little bit more patient with us um, as soon as we have news when it's going to go live we'll be shouting it from the rooftops as we normally are uh, so that everybody can dive in and play that wonderful hotfix and all the things that it contains so yeah just be a little bit more patient with us if you can um other things that we've seen mentioned uh and uh, quite rightly so we we like to hear the good and the bad is that the controls on consoles specifically people have been asking about things such as inertia dampeners customizable controls etc um it's it's a very technical thing to achieve um and what we're trying to do is we're looking into how feasible that kind of work is for the team now just to preface this just because we're going to do some work in that regard does not mean that we are going to implement them okay we've kind of got to assess what it looks like for the team to be able to do that uh, what the work is involved and how difficult it is to make that happen and certification for that can be quite difficult so again it's something that we're looking at as we've said before um, we do know what you would like what you would want to do uh, or us to do with the game so uh, please bear with us but it's not a promise okay we, we're not going to promise that it's going to happen but we're just doing a, basically a feasibility study uh, on the situation so uh, uh that's something we're looking at in the near future. If you do have anything that you'd like to bring up, any suggestions or anything, you can post it across the forums, even into our new fancy schmancy support forum that we have here on our Discord. Um, put it in there as a suggestion. Things that you'd like to see, you'd like to hear as well uh, from us. You know, we're very transparent. We're very open. So, uh, yeah, if you have anything that you want to bring up, please do bring that to us. So we can take a look and you know we'll tell you if it's a, a good option bad option we're full of answers so shall we continue here we are in the drake system flying our vindicator i do believe i've got a lot of things that i need to sell as well my uh my inventory is rather full <laughs> i've not been hoarding anything honestly i've just been keeping uh things and i haven't sold them so i'm just gonna whiz through a lot of these things uh, and we're just going to get rid of them because uh, we're not going to use them. No, let's go to the shop. There we go. There we go. Value. Yes, there we go. So if you do have any questions, please do fire them in. Eric is going to be collating them as we're going along. Um, he's going to do a wonderful job of this i'm absolutely certain he's an absolute well thank legend. you for your confidence <laughs> it's actually very good because it's, it's a bit of a role reversal for us both you know eric's normally here uh, showing off his fancy flying skills and uh and then i'm the opposite i'm screwing around making sure everybody's getting their questions collated and then we get to answer them we will uh, answer them as we normally do um at uh intervals probably about every 30 minutes or so uh and if eric does have anything that he can uh, fire into the chats in the interim, then he will. I'm certain of it. I'm certain of it. So, uh, yeah, all good stuff. Um, let's have a look at the perks. Now, you may not have seen, or you may have seen, depending upon how far you are into the game. Obviously, we have included some new perks, specifically one for Terrain. If you find that you have too many resources and you're thinking, well, why? just give me the money, just give me the money, then you can sell some of your resources, but obviously you need to upgrade these things. I'm kind of blocking it here, but... Uh, a few credits, Hadron Buffers and Crystal Dials that you need to unlock that one. And then Carla, she allows you to have what is very, very handy. Again, it was something that was requested within uh, the community. And it is uh, what we call supervision. So it reveals any remaining secrets in a location if most of its secrets have already been discovered. Now, there's a certain threshold um, for revealing the last few um, secrets. Uh, it's not going to reveal all of them. You have to have found so many of the secrets within a location, and then it should give you visual hints on screen as well. 
uh, for you to find the rest because some people will find it a little bit frustrating and they'd have to fly around for hours and hours and hours and and not necessarily find him. So we did listen, uh, and uh, this is one of those implementations of us, you know, listening and uh, wanting to help you guys out. And that is something you can unlock as well. I haven't done it yet, but it was something to do down the line. Right, let's have a look. What have we got on the mission side? So uh, detoxification still to do. Citizen, oh, Parasite 2. That's that's quite nice, is that? But we are here in Drake, so we'll have a look at that. We'll go take off and we'll... Actually, no, we'll do. We'll have a look at the ships. What have we got? What have we got? Ooh, nice little pop-up coming up there from the ship dealer. A um, little bit more information to help you along your way. So keep an eye out for a total number of nine different ship classes available at ship dealers. Each ship comes with a class-dependent alt and a random set of class-specific passives. Ships don't lose value. Some people weren't aware of that, so we thought we'd highlight it. Uh, when you buy them, you can always be traded in for a ship of the same tier at nearly no cost. This makes it easy to try out different classes and find the one that suits your playstyle best. And uh, in addition to medium-sized ship classes like your Sentinel, there are also light and heavy ships. Heavy ships can take a beating, but are harder to manoeuvre. Yes, they're very much harder to manoeuvre. Uh, light ships excel at dodging enemy fire thanks to their incredible speed and handling, but cannot take many hits. Ship dealers refresh their offers regularly, starting to replace ships a couple of minutes after having left the shop's location. When revisiting the location after, after about an hour, all of the ships will have been swapped out. So do be mindful that if you find a ship and you think, ooh, I just need a few more credits, uh, don't be too upset if you come back and it's been sold or it's been rotated out. So that can happen. I know we've had the... Uh, that before but there is a perk to allow you to rotate the shop uh, stock a little bit quicker um, can be a help can be a hindrance if you're looking for a specific ship that you want uh, sometimes people do fly to a specific vendor and go ah where's my ship gone and then they realize it's been swapped out but um, you may find another one you may find another one so we've got a gunship uh, there a vanguard stinger striker I have been playing a striker on one of my other saves as well, so uh, that's not too bad. We are in the Vindy Tier 3. I don't know whether to switch to the striker. I'm not sure. Locked enemies suffer from 20%. Speed reduction can grab them through drones. Enemies within 300 meters cannot generate shields. Okay, that's that's not too shabby. That's not too... We might go with that. We might try that one. Let's go with that. Sure. We'll buy and sell the current. We'll just we'll just go with that. It only costs us ten thousand. That's not too bad, is it? Gunship is a tier three plus. Yeah, uh, I know I've played quite a lot. Flory, uh, Flory over on YouTube is just asking uh, about the T three. Is gunship is is a nice ship, but with me having played it quite a lot on my other saves, I wasn't going to stick with it. To be fair, so. Uh, uh, I tell you what, we'll do. We'll just get out there, get launched, get gone. Let's see what we can find. Yeah. Out of curiosity, what's your favorite ship to fly, Gary? Oh, see, I have been liking the Striker. I know I've said before that my preferred ship has been either the Sentinel or the Gunship. But since I've been playing the Striker on my other save, I have actually enjoyed that. So um, it's, it's creeping in as a favorite. It really is. I think still it's probably the Sentinel. Uh, I've just played that so, so much, but sometimes variety is the spice of life. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. What about yours, Eric? I, I know that we've been asked this quite a few times on, on stream, but uh, I know you prefer the light, agile ships. What's oh, yours? yeah, definitely. I, I, I bounce around in my decision all the time, but mm -hmm. um, lately my, my latest uh, gameplay um, off stream has been uh, the Stinger. Man, I go back to that one so much, um, but um, it's been bouncing between the Stinger and the Vanguard. Mm -hmm. uh, so both light fighters, the Vanguard, I feel, is just a, a bit healthier since our Armed and Dangerous update that we dropped at the beginning of this month. So, yeah. Yeah, things do change once um, things get a little tweak or a, a little bit of a difference. Then sometimes people are like, oh, I want to try what it's going to be like in this build. And of course, with the, with the changes that we made in, in the update to Arms and Dangerous, it's um, people have wanted to dive in and try their different builds. All things change. So you just got to keep on top of things. But yeah, having that little bit of adaptability is good. Oh, we got a damaged ship. 
Damn it. Okay, somebody's just jumped in as well. Let these guys out. Blamey scout, gotta go down. Yeah. Right, let's go back to nanobots. One large nanobot. Oh man. Let me nicking all my things. All my things. Hey, you did me a biggie right there. You did. Nothing of it. Just uh don't go outlaw. <laughs> don't go outlaw. Don't go outlaw. Right, so Prime Zapper. Hmm, probably not. No. Well, I could put that into the... Because it is... Yeah, we've got a third slot. Um, secondary shield breakers. We've we'll got shield breakers. It's good, good, good. Anything else here? Let's always have a little sweep around and see what we can find. Oh, God. Oh, jumped in. What did we get? Okay. Blasters are never my my thing. Uh, I know they're good for up close and personal, but uh, yeah. Amazing how many people's playstyles are all different. Right. Small arms. Like a T Rex. Oh, let's go get that case over there. We'll need to just bring up YouTube chat. I've just realised I haven't got it showing. All the wonderful people over on YouTube will be uh, saying that I'm ignoring them at all sorts. Right, just bear with me. I'll just bring up YouTube chat. No worries. I've been tracking you guys. Cool. Even though Gary doesn't love you, I do. <laughs> That's all very, very good. I love that. Yeah. yeah he, he, he doesn't like you the rest of the time, but only when he's, he's got to collect the questions. Yeah, we love it. We love it. Uh... <laughs> Uh, da, da, da. Go, let's go back into there. Right. Let's take off again. Oh, I've got another container. These containers are hearing everywhere. You never know what you're going to get. Oop. Right, let's carry on there. <clears throat> <Slow. laughs> oh dear. I just see the question from Slorene's at and yeah. <laughs> What's on my list? Don't worry about it. <laughs> love it, love it. Um Ooh, one of the best looking planets in the game. Personal opinion, obviously. This guy picked a hell of a place to hide out. Hell being the operative word. There's someone calling himself Ghost in the area. Could you please open a channel? Valent Pango sent me. I'd like to discuss some trade. Mm. No answer. Could this really be the right place? I mean, who would stay here? There is the faintest signal of a life form below the surface. I cannot locate the exact position, but allow me to point you in the general direction. Okay, let's check it out. Such a wonderful environment, this. Just be careful of the heat. I am not going to dock because I'm not going to carry on with the uh, the quest because I don't want to spoil anything, but I just thought I'd show uh, the wonderful environment that the team have made uh, here on Motor Rift. Uh, be very, very careful of the lava. It gets a little bit toasty. A little bit toasty. If you don't know, because some people won't, uh, in the game we do have a wonderful uh, 
bean shop basically uh create a wallpaper creator i want to call it really because you can make some wonderful screenshots or take some wonderful screenshots uh of the environments that you do visit um <clears throat> we'll be looking at some of these later on uh in our segment towards the end where we do look at what the community produces uh, in terms of screenshots and fan art uh, if you do want to post them up then you can stick it up on steam if you want to do it on there or if you want to throw it up into our screenshot uh um forum on our discord you're more than welcome so it'll be uh, interesting to see what you can produce uh, let's get over there before oh, okay i can't jump out apparently because i'm in a mission so i'm just gonna have to try and talk to him damn it we got locked in Found. It is also probable that he is not even here, and the life sign I am registering is a native species. There is movement of a life sign. Caution advised. Okay, let's head back. See what's going on. See your turrets. Let's take you out. There we go. You have to stop this. Lies hang in the balance. Please take my word for it. I need that device to stop a war from breaking out. The life sign has moved again. Let's see if we can coax him out of his hole. Ooh, hello. Really don't want to be dealing with these. delicate flying in these confined spaces otherwise your ship go boom boom very very quickly and <laughs> it's not ideal anything else another one there okay so we've got a power socket core over there and we've got a dispenser behind us but i think we'll just get rid of these out of the way first there again tight intricate flying is one of those things let's see if we can disable this there we go Boink. there we go make it a little bit easier i'm gonna be famous last words though i'm gonna say yeah just intricate flying and then straight into one of these mines no 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 that's that's mine i i do that <laughs> It's a recurring theme, it's not just us, yeah. Everybody. You certainly are testing your limits, though. I'll, I'll stop yeah. It. yeah. <laughs> Slowly eking through. Are there any more? Whoop, hello. Any flaming barbecue? There we go. Right, I think that may be. I think there was possibly one. Yeah, one mine trap still here. Let's just get rid of that one because that will be the one that we fly into. I'll guarantee it. Cool. That should be all of them. Right, let's get the. Our call. Cool. See, Ooh, unstable one. It's going to be interesting. Avoid the flames. Avoid the flames.
And we're in. Yay! Cool. Back to third person. All ourselves. Right. Onwards. Investigate the life sign. Okay. That one out of the way. Now, see, they can't hit you down here, so uh, floor in the defences. Another defence turret there. Gone. Excellent. Ooh, bulletproof okay, container. <laughs> Hang on, are we even talking about the same person? The deadbeat who calls himself Ghost. Who else would come out this far to dodge what he owes? Mm. Mm, yeah, well, interesting story, but I'm gonna have to ask you to hold off until I've had a word with him first. A private matter. Besides, I was here before you. <laughs> I was here first. Takes precedence. Back off or we open fire. It always comes to this. A little courtesy and understanding could prevent so much violence. You didn't leave these goons here, did you? Or should I thank you for the intervention? By the way, you being here gives me the time to get the jump on them. Ah, so you're a ghost. I don't mm -hmm. think I'd leave these guys here, just bad timing. But you and me really need a word. Yeah, I heard you're you need a word. the disruptor, but to be honest, I don't know you from Adam. You anyway? <laughs> There's a certain play on words there. He's all style, his ghost. He's all style. If we're to trust each other, you need to tell me your real name. Actually, it really is Adam. It really Adam is Adam. Roslin. Adam Roslin? Well, I was happily I've broken to a guy with that name years back. But I saw him die. Well, couldn't have been me then. But, uh, I kind of have a complicated family tree. <laughs> anyway, I have It was very complicated family tree. Just gotta wait for the timer. You can see that there's a timer there, just at the side of the ship. So avoid <laughs> trying to take too much damage. Really got these guys on the run. Oh, He's done. Nine seconds. Well, I'm sure something will turn up. They cold. You seem like a resourceful guy to me. Thanks, that's encouraging. Nice. Yeah. What kind of technological wizardry is this? Let's take out the rest of them. Some rockets in the face is always a good option. He's stuck down there with the malware. And then the last one down here as well. Excellent. That was the last of them. Can we dock and have that word now? Uh, seeing as you were help, I should hear you out. Oh, waiting. 
more stuff down. Ooh, credits. Always want the credits. Wait. And in we go. Boop. So I'll be needing that mainframe disruptor. Just gonna skip the conversation, but we can repair while we're here, which is good. Gonna restock. Right. Launch and get out of there. Delia, Ben, guys, I'm heading back to base with company. I'll be able to offer a full briefing once I'm there. It would be about time you dropped off Eduardo. Calla is very anxious to see him. Calla is very anxious to see him. He's safe and sound on board. I'll also need Ben to take a look at a disruptor device I picked up. I'll be there shortly. That's a very cool planet. Very cool. Right. Let's see. Kind of kicked on that story. Crash and burn. Okay. Gang wars. Quimper belts. Let's go to Quimper belt. Although I'll do another distress call while I'm here. While we're here. Blueprint, what do we get? Laser. Some more stuff. I think that was it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> really? Right, when you're in these kind of procedurally generated little uh, instances, then just have a little check around for uh, items and containers always oh, some usually lurking somewhere we've got okar prime heading in let's deal with those they're not very happy with us oh, hello. Do you find that you're getting absolutely hammered by the Okar Prime? It could be their shots are very, very strong, as you can see. But some of their um, the weapon fire can be hit back. They like a bit of table tennis. Over there, all that one done. Right, Eric, the legend, the man, the myth. What questions and what answers have we got for the wonderful peeps in the various chats? Absolutely. We've got a slew of them, actually. So let's go ahead and get started from Junior Pingotti, I think, over on YouTube. Um, it was a follow-up question from uh, a little bit of redemption conversation, uh, but I wanted you to try and answer it, see where we can go from there. Oh. The question is, why does the redemption set use two primary weapon slots? That is a very, very good question. I will have to defer to you on that one, Eric, because I've never picked up the redemption one yet. <laughs> oh, very good, very good. Well, yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> the short of it is that whenever we were creating the various set items, we also wanted to make sure that there were some ramifications for combining different weapon sets with others. And this is no different with the redemption set. We have two weapon slots needed to make it a bit more challenging to apply a combination with other sets that also have weapons associated with them. Fun. Excellent. Yeah, Eric's the absolute legend when it comes to uh, these kind of topics. Um, he knows the uh, ins and outs of the weapons and how they kind of work together and the meanings behind those synergies. So uh, yeah, we're lucky to have him, lucky to have him. Well, thanks for that. Next question comes from Soreen Tetson, and he asks, does Gary like smoked haddock and jellied <laughs> eels? <laughs> oh, dear. Now, this is, uh, I think, a reference because uh, I am British, and uh, we have this kind of... Uh, yeah, you'd never know, would you? You'd never know, <laughs> not, from the, uh, not from the accent. Um, so smoked haddock, yes, I've had smoked haddock. Um, not too bad, no, too bad. The jellied eels, oh, my... Oh, no, no, no. 
No, that to be fair is quite a very uh, southern uh, English, almost like London area. Uh, jelly deals. Yeah, it's oh, they're, 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 they're just no, they're just wrong. <laughs> they're just wrong now. So uh, yeah, smoked haddock, yes, definitely. Uh, but uh, jelly deals, no, definitely not. No, not on my radar whatsoever. <laughs> Good, good, good question though, Slurring. I love it. Excellent. Next question also comes from YouTube. It is Cyber Cyborg 20XX, and they ask, when does the new update drop on PlayStation 5? Um, right, so that would be the hotfix um, that we have currently in certification. Um, it's taken a little bit longer than we'd like, a few technical issues, but if you just hold on a little bit longer, hopefully we'll have it with you in a very short while. Um, certification can take, you know, uh, a very short time, very long time, uh, depending upon if we do hit any issues, but we are hoping it's going to be very, very soon. Uh, but as soon as we do, um, we'll be shouting it from the rooftops as we always like to, and uh, it'll be across all the social media. Um, hopefully, hopefully sometime next week, but we can't promise it. But uh, yeah, hopefully then, hopefully then. Good to hear, good to hear. Next question comes from Stonebender over on Twitch. Mr. Geekbyte, you said on the forums, the best way to get set items is to target elites in the sector. How does one target elites efficiently? And the question also kind of goes around, where do you find elites as well? Right, elites, uh, probably one of the, I found anyway one of the better ways to go finding the elites is outlaw bases uh there's usually those uh Cito specifically used to be very very good for elites um i'm trying to think of any other instance that would be a good way to kind of farm elites um i don't know if you know of any specifically eric that uh, would be a a more uh, efficient way shot here all right oops I mean, I think what you're doing right here, actually uh, doing this battle, um, there's normally elites that can spawn from time to time in a healthier uh, capacity. Same thing with high risk areas. Um, and yeah, those are gonna be two pretty prominent ways to do it. Mm -hmm. Jobs can also tend to generate a, a healthy number of elites um, depending on what level the job is. So definitely be keeping your eyes out for those higher level ones. Uh, they can garner what you're looking for. Yeah. We just absolutely That's annihilated cool. in here. Coalition mm -hmm. nearly down. Oh. It might be fudging it into your favor, so uh, yeah. keep it up. <laughs> so I've got a, I got a lore question for wow, you. Wow. That, that, just to see what you think. <laughs> I can feel a deferment coming on again. <laughs> no, this is good. This is good. Because um, we don't... I'm going to straight up just say that we don't actually have specific lore surrounding this, but we do have kind of an idea of how we explain it. So the question is from Wizard Jerry, um, when a player drops to zero in a rift, how come Adam is, a, he aborts the rift rather than straight up dies? Ah, uh, okay, right, yes. So uh, I can t partly answer this and I'm sure Eric will uh, fill in a little bit more. Um, obviously you, when you're in a rift, you are kind of in uh, a situation where you're trying to deal with resolve and it's your ability to deal with that situation so rather than you dying it's kind of your mental ability to be in that place um so rather than you dying because we're dealing with the redeemers and the the ancients when you're in a rift it's a, a very mentally tasking environment. So rather than it be a health issue in terms of your you know, ship's health, it's more of a mental issue. So that's why you're battling with resolve and that's why you'll get booted out in, in that way. So it's rather than a death, it's your ability to withstand being within a rift. I hope I've answered that right. That's that's a very solid answer, actually. Um, and yeah, just to add just a tad bit more to that, Wizard Jerry. Um, yeah. We wanted to have these rifts as kind of a separate reality from Adam's life. So when he's pulled into the rift, it's almost kind of like an echo of him. And he's encountering these echoes of these others 
that have been affected by the ancients in some way, shape, or form. So whenever he can no longer withstand the rift from a mental degree or a physical degree, I suppose, um, when losing your um, ability to withstand its very nature, then you are pulled out. That's generally through your ship's hull uh, looking like it is destroyed. So then you're ripped out of this false existence and returned to uh, the real life, if you will. Fun, fun. Woo. <laughs> Couple more questions for you. Nope. We've got another one from Cyber Cyborg uh, 20XX. Um, they're asking about console controls for lights and inertial dampeners. Ah, uh, yes. Well, this is something that we've heard from uh, the community quite uh, quite a lot. We do track these uh, popular topics, specifically with the the lights, the headlights, which we can turn off with uh, uh, the T key on uh, keyboard and mouse. It really boils down to having space on a controller. Uh, we're a little bit limited with the controller uh, in terms of what we can actually fit onto there. So your lights will be permanently on rather than being able to turn it on uh, and off. Um, with regards to customization, it is something that we're kind of doing a little bit of due diligence on. Uh, we're not making any promises. As, as we said earlier, we don't want to say, yes, we're definitely going to have control customization etc etc um we're looking at the feasibility and the technical challenges of uh bringing those options to console so there's a lot of work involved in the team you know have to determine whether it's worthwhile uh, how much it will take in terms of development time because things have to be tested retested and then we have the certification of making sure it works um you know the console manufacturers such as sony and microsoft have got to say look you've put this option in does it work is it going to cause problems for the player uh and it's got to pass that 100 percent because if you have a, an instance where something causes the game to lock up and they can't um, solve that save or anything like that with pc we're very lucky because we can dive into files a little bit more consoles have a very much more locked down uh, ecosystem so we have to be 100 percent certain that things will be 100 percent foolproof and that's why it's very, very difficult to uh, achieve certification. But um, we have heard you. It's something that we'll, you know, take on board, see if it's possible, see if it's worthwhile. Uh, and then uh, if it should come to fruition, then we'll let you know. But again, no promises on that. And also just a quick follow up to that. Um, for those of you who are not aware, inertia dampening wasn't initially in the game either. Mm -hmm. We added it in as a community request um, through the course of early access, and we still did not tutorialize it. It is an advanced is element delicious. that you have to bind to your uh, buttons after you start up the game. So um, it's very intentional that we don't have this bound by default. We do not tutorialize it. It's an advanced mechanic, um, but uh, we recognize there's still a healthy amount of you out there who desire this. And um, yeah, we are we are talking about it, but we can't make any guarantees just as Gary had said. So thank you for those details, Gary. Really appreciate that. No worries, no worries. All right, I got one more question for you and then you'll be off to the races. This Come comes on. from Nomads 2 k and he says, has anyone here tried this on handheld PC? Oh, handheld PC. So I presume with that, you were talking about the Steam Deck and possibly the ROG alloy as well. Um, we do have um, a version available. Obviously, you can play it on the Steam Deck. Uh, it's not been tested as far as I'm aware on uh, ROG alloy specifically. Um, but we do have um, the ability to run on the Steam Deck. Um, again, we have a demo. We do advise people if you have uh, one of these devices to check out the demo uh, via Steam. It is free. Uh, it gives you a nice good taster of the whole environment and how well it will run on your devices. It'll be um, interesting to see how it fares for you. We obviously just through normal development, we're wanting to improve the performance uh, of the game across all platforms and that includes uh, the Steam Deck but it is uh, technically difficult to to do so do test it at, uh, at your leisure try the demo and uh, hopefully uh, you'll feel be rather pleased with how well it uh, performs for you all right thank you for that response and fly on pilot 
Excellent. Right. We've just docked here. Uh, we've still got the roofs in space to do. Parasite 2. That's a very cool quest. I'm not going to do that one. I'll avoid that one for the time being. Right. So. Not that. So what we'll do is we'll track that one. Let's try with the detoxification. I like that one. Here we go with that one. Right, let's jump away. Jump away. But yeah, if you do have any questions uh, across the chat, uh, please do um, tag Eric Giraffasaur in the chat and he will collate them and we'll, uh, we'll ask uh, and answer some more in a little while. Only the good questions, though. If, they, if there's if there's silly questions, I won't collect them. Yeah. Yes, we have a filter. We 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 have a filter. Normally, it's the geek bite filter, but this week it's the giraffe saw. That's right, and I'm brutal. <laughs> Not really. No. <laughs> I don't know. We've got the the banter now between the the various chats. Like YouTube chat is the best. No Twitch chat's better. You know, <laughs> the rivalry is real. We had a couple comments drop over on Facebook too. It's nice. We are getting cool. some uh, audience retention over there. It's it's great. It's great. I guess I could ask a question that's kind of uh, poked at from Facebook actually. Yon AR um, just made the comment and said, "Imagine playing with friends co-op." You wanted uh, to speak on that one? Oh right, right yeah. Okay. Um, co-op is not something that we're looking to introduce uh into everspace 2 um it's a it's a much request feature again we do listen to what people are uh, interested in what features they'd like to see uh in the game uh now unfortunately co-op is one of those um awkward situations where if we were to try to introduce it it would require a, a rewrite of the game code uh, the team would have to put extensive time into making something like that happen uh and to be honest with you, it's not going to happen for Everspace 2. But don't get us wrong, it's something that we definitely hear uh, from the community. But who knows what the future will bring. But Everspace 2, unfortunately, won't have co-op. Um, it's a similar situation for multiplayer. Um, the work that you do for co-op is pretty much full-on multiplayer. So um, doing one, you're creating the other. But it's a lot of, lot of work for the team. And with everything that we're going to be bringing to the game with the free update... And then the uh, premium DLC much further out, the premium expansion, then no, it's not going to happen, I'm afraid. Thanks for those clarifying details. I promise I won't sneak another question for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> famous last words, famous last words. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's head through the Drake Passage. Try to kill everything here, especially myself. Uh, yeah, Bearded Frog, uh, just to answer your question, yeah, we do stream to uh, Facebook. Um, we've only just started redoing it again recently, and uh, yeah, it's a, a nice little platform for us. Head out here. Right, let's jump, let's get out of Tito Transit Gates, let's head there. We've got the fast forward effect. We can get there quicker, which is always good. Always good. Yeah, some people are asking who would be the player two in a co op? Uh, well, you know, um, that would be in, entirely down to your choice. Uh, you may want your wife, girlfriend, partner, friend. You know, anybody who'll uh, enjoy the wonders of the game, but yeah, unfortunately, it's just not going to be in Everspace 2. I think they were meaning the character. No, oh, yeah. Be... yeah, the two Adam clones, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's funny, though. I, I can speak on this for just a moment. Cool. Um, we, we've talked about this internally of, like... Um, if if we would have gone multiplayer because again for everybody listening just heard gary answer uh there are no plans 
Um, but we've had that question before, like, well, how would it look lore wise if there was a, se a second player? Like, who would be that second player? Would mm -hmm. it just be like a copy and paste of the Adam clone and be like a second Adam clone? Or would it be another character that exists in the world? And um, surprisingly enough, a lot of us kind of thought about Elec being the second player and then it mm -hmm. would just turn off Elec's ability to jump in. Um, obviously, there would be some curious answers within that uh, to further back it up. Like, what ship would he be flying? What's the loadout? Blah, blah, blah. Well, that's getting into the details of we never have to worry about because there's not going to be multiplayer. So. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of complexities just to bring in a seemingly easy feature to a game. Um, it's There's a lot more work underneath the hood that needs to be done uh, to allow those things to happen. And um, yeah, it's it's balancing the development, the cost, the time, etc. And everything involved in that uh, to make it happen. But, uh, you know, we hear you. We know what people would like to see. But uh, just got to wait for the future because we never know what that's going to bring. He's all said a ship remotely piloted by Hive. <laughs> that would be, I think that would be an interesting one. I think I'm not too sure how we'd uh, how we deal with that. To be fair, I'm not really sure. Uh, ah, right, work. I knew I went to the wrong one. Johan Cross, Elec is the greatest of all time. <laughs> Let's fast forward, get through there. Uh oh, something's launched. I can hear the bleep, bleep. Now that's good. Take out the outlaw raider. Excellent. Right, put it there. I've oh, got webbed. Web drop. Take out that turret. Come on. Thank you. Avoid their mines. Right, I'm just dropping on the smuggler base, see if we can sell anything, buy anything. You never know. I know some people, uh, the comments that we see on the forums or even on Reddit, um, where they're looking for even base items for, for crafting. Sometimes they can't find them. They've been looking for, you know, um, a variety of those. Do check the shops from time to time. You will find, I haven't got any here, so I can't use this as an example. You may find something uh, simple in your, in your crafting ingredients that you, you may need. It could be, you know, a uh, baramite that they're selling, for example, or even just copper. Sometimes you need those, especially for the perks, and you're finding that you don't have um, the required amount to unlock the perks. So do check the vendors. Uh, you don't always have to go looking for. Uh, or deposits in various places do check out the shops um because they do sell them from time to time and uh yeah nomads uh, just says yes yeah, shops spawn rare items so yes you sometimes can find absolutely brilliant uh, pieces of gear that you can use there so uh, yeah do keep an eye out on the shops for those as well um as you call no probably not going to switch to that one sell some of this stuff you can stack into there Okay. Yours cannon. No, I'm just gonna get rid. Just gonna get rid. Just gonna get rid. Twenty-three A one six. How's that fair? Okay, we're gonna I think we'll just sell that one. Oh, the blaster. There we go. Right, nothing left for us there, so let's just dive off. 
really recolour my ship. Always nice to do some of the colorations in the game now. The agility of a striker over uh, other ships. I'm still getting used to because I've never been a, a very agile ship flyer. I have, like say, used the, the gunship or, or the Sentinel uh, predominantly. But um, yeah, I'm finding the strike and maneuverability very, very nice. Cruise booster. Let's just check that. Bad, very slow recharge. And I'd use five percent increased corrosion damage. We'll switch just yet. Let's see what we can find. <coughs> mm -hmm. I just love that there's that turret there that just wants to activate on you when you come through here. <laughs> through here a bit of corrosion that's fine right you're right all right let's jump let's get out of there oh my god uh do you have interceptor best all-round ship Chlorine's going for the stinger. Uh, Beardy Frog says Striker is best. Oh my gosh, I can't handle all these opinions. <laughs> I know. Everybody's uh, that's it. Everybody's got an opinion. You're not necessarily right. You're not necessarily wrong. So. Uh... Oh, it's head over there. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, all the various chats, let us know what your favourite ship is um, as you've played through. You, maybe you've played a variety of ships and you can't decide. And we've got a bit of a bit of a disagreement over on YouTube. A bit of frogs very adamantly saying the striker is the best all round. Right. Take these out. Armour drone out. Hang on. Boop. Well done, Tormentor. Don't like you. Scout. There we go. Maybe. Maybe. They may drop something nice. Who knows? For an elite, obviously, you will see it in their name tag, uh, but you will also see the skull as well, so you'll know that they are an elite. A slightly tougher enemy. Uh, we got some pure insidium and nanofibers. Obviously, it wasn't going to give us anything. Right. The. We want to be down there, so and then jump gate. Here we get to there. Great through Ram Gate. <laughs> No decent names left. Does ask, is it the ship or is it the player? Hmm. That does beg the question. If it's the player, then they can make every ship good. Is always good. Always a good idea. 
Right, let's head to the Ascension. Let's see if we can carry on with this. West. <laughs> Eric's just throwing it into the mix. Based on the fastest race times we've received, the Vanguard is faster. Remember, he said that, not me. <laughs> Deal with the Redeemers and this motley crew are here. There we go. Did drop a blueprint, which was nice. That's all. Done. Right, okay. Oh, hello, Redeemer Inquisitors. Thank you very much for being here. Behind you. Oh, that. Bumping into me, that's just rude. And one more drone. There. Thank you for the things. Hello. Ancient power crystal. There we go. Right. Find this nice little waypoint, shall we? Find Bernard. Adam, you've come. Of course, I'll do my bit when called. Your selflessness in this vital task is vastly appreciated by all. My colleagues on Avonrest will be observing remotely and have taken huge interest in the outcome of our undertakings. Let's get this party started. Get I don't like to worry about it. I understand. Redeemers are likely to appear any moment. Here, I have dispatched the infrasound missile delivery system, called the Exorcist for short. Imogen's idea, not mine. Sweet child. Pick it up and install it on your craft without delay. Got it. This isn't like. Right, we need to put that in, so we'll put it into our last on my ship, I hope. Not at all. It will only be used for this mission. It will not affect your ship's system in any way. Thank you for asking. I have enough experimental tech to deal with as it is, without a new factor to consider. Now, once we're ready, we must find a redeemer to. Well. Deprogram, for want of a better word. Deprogram. Uh, there's enough of them around. When you shoot a target, it will be marked. Stick to that one target, as it will need to be bombarded several times in order for this to work. Right. Incoming. Right, so we need to get the target. They are going to come to us, but we're going to have to maintain lock. We can wow, see that they, yeah, they do take a while to lock on, but not a rocket scientist. Oh. Point. You can see the exorcism that's starting. There we go. What are you doing to me? I will see you perished. Oh dear, that didn't quite have the desired effect. Oops. Did it? I'm gonna hold them off. There goes your hope, my friend. More redeemers are closing in. You must keep them off me. Otherwise, I won't be able to work on the exorcist. Already on it. Uh, Good job um. keeping us alive. Right. Again with another subject. I hope it works this time. I 
Really well, it does. Down these guys. Let's try this again. Hoping for more productive results this time. Okay. I sure hope so too. Lock if we can. I'm a little surprised these guys are as low level as they are. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think they're but, uh, been a little, I think I picked up this quest quite a while ago. I see. Yeah, you're probably on the cusp of uh, getting everything leveled up then mm. through the main missions, but uh, yeah. Take out this redeemer this time. Some people do get caught out with the long lock time on this, but uh, yeah, just wait until the white uh, arrows have disappeared and then you can fire away. And you see the figure next to the name increase once it gets 100%. Get that on. It's simply not working yet. I will continue the work on the exorcist back on even rest. Don't fret, Prof. There is hope. They're doing important work. Well, Indeed. we at least made some progress with these experimentations. We learned something. With continued study, I feel we should be able to cure these tortured souls one day. But not today. Look me up when you think you're close to a more accurate prototype. I'd be happy to help. I'm so sorry to waste your time. Please, take this. It could be of use to you in your travels. No, you really don't have to. No, no, I insist. Well, okay. Thanks, Prof. Say hi to Imogen for me and look out for her. She's a sweet kid. Uh, that's that one completed. <clears throat> and we leveled up as well, which is very, very handy. We'll just get rid of these redeemers. Your little nuances. Me some plating there. Grab that. There we go. Nice little game save there as well. What did we get? What did we get? Did we get anything else? Yes, we got a nice legendary there as well. Seals protection. In. We may slow it down any good. Okay, we lose repair on kill. Although the armor is quite nice, it is a thousand more more firepower structure. I think we may need to switch to that. We may need to switch to that. Right. Before we decide where we're heading next, we're just over the hour mark. Have we got any more questions, Eric, that either you or I can answer? Yeah, we got a. We just got two, just two little light ones. Uh, otherwise, I've been kind of helping out uh, everyone in the chats. We're having a lot of fun with some questions and whatnot. And just want to give a shout out to everybody in the chats for your engagement. Uh, you guys are great. Thank you very much for being here. 
So the first question we've got, um, a little bit more of a follow-up, but you know, we're gonna go into it anyway. It's from Junior Panciati. Uh, was there a plan before in the game to make opponents with shields more important? Um, they reference having heavy energy weapons seeming to be uh, more important, for mm. example. This may be a little before my time on this one, Eric, so I don't know if you could possibly dive in with this answer. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I could probably speak on it a little bit. Mm. Um, we can reference Everspace 1, where we actually didn't have armor at all. We just had energy and kinetic, where energy damaged your shields, other energy-based elements, and your kinetic damaged the hull. Any type of armor was actually a reduction to the hull. So um, we wanted to evolve that formula a little bit more for Everspace 2 to open up new opportunities with the itemization in particular. And through this, we um, capitalized on having all weapons have both energy and kinetic damage, but having a focus for using uh, certain weapons against either armor or shields, um, et cetera, et cetera. So kind of a lengthy response here, but in the sense of making opponents with shields more important, it's kind of yes and no. We wanted to expand and make enemies that only have shields to be addressed in a certain way versus enemies that only have armor to be addressed in another way. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I forgot about Everspace 1 uh, being without shields as such. Great game, by the way. Excellent. All right, and the last question that we have, for the moment at least, come, comes from Nomads2k. Um, and it was a bit of a follow-up after our little discussion about co-op. And they mm -hmm. asked, well, if no co-op, how about renting wingmen? That would be a very cool idea. I think it would probably fall under a similar thing in terms of AI uh, requirements similar to co-op. Um, I think the team would obviously have to investigate something along those lines, whether it would be a, a feasible option. Um, I think it would probably be quite difficult to do because, uh, as we have spoke about before, having people jumping such as uh, Elik from time to time through one of the perks is a bit different to having somebody with you uh, all the time because you paid for them to be there so I think it would be something I'm sure the team have already looked at but possibly quite difficult to implement um, but by all means do throw it up on our um, discussion forums um, suggestions over on Steam or even on the Discord so we can have a further chat about it and uh, we can follow up with the team uh, about feasibility of, of such features. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, it sounds good. Whether it could be actioned in principle is a, is a different thing. Yeah, and to respond to that further, this is something we have talked about internally and in having like a companion that you could, for example, like customize and have fly with you, uh, something along those lines. And this was an idea uh, quite some time ago. So for anybody who's wondering like, oh, is this something that they're planning on doing? No, 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 hold, hold, stop. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, there, there's a lot of ideas that we have to generate for figuring out how we want these foundational systems in the game to, to operate. And it's no different when it comes to having companions that you're picking up along the way. Um, in fact, this is actually a, a bit of a concept of why we have Elec doing what he does. He's in part a wingman that joins you and leaves you. Um, uh, Ghost also kind of does this for a little bit during the course of the story missions, um, for example. And uh, beyond that, there are, I mean, there's there's so many different technical things we could talk about in regards to having wingmen or not, but um, pretty early in development, we had decided straight up that we didn't want this to be some kind of tactical wingman oriented game where you're telling units to go to a specific place or perform a certain action, um, quite a bit of a, a change of, of what we were going for. So in order to like, truly rein that into the single player experience, allowing your ship to shine, be customized through all of this loot um, to your heart's desire. Uh, we pulled back on that element of what a wingman would even look like, uh, giving all the focus to you and being on you. Excellent. See, we like to have reasons for doing things. It's not because, you know, we don't want to a lot of the time. It's for a specific yeah. reason, uh, especially through development. So. Right, and claim some rewards. 
from my renown. Oh, that's handy. So let's, let's grab those. Decal, credits, energy shield, nanoplating, and a penumbra. That's actually quite nice. Eh? Better than the Mison that I've just put on there. Uh, the penumbra is a part of the Union Eclipse set, which is very, very nice. Do I want to switch to it, though? Because I am liking the Disintegrator. We'll keep all of it for the time being. We'll keep all of it for the time being. Right, that's that mission done. Uh, completionist, oh, that's a shadow creature there. Let's head back to Drake, I think would be quite nice. I don't think I've got enough things to craft another. Uh, Riffin space. Oh, freebies. Freebies. Get some freebies. Always good for credits. Ah, oh, special bypass. Um, now, have we got enough things to be? Oh, we build. We did build this one. That's very handy. That is very handy. I couldn't remember when I when I'm switching between saves. I can't always remember what I built. Um, <laughs> one of those. Let's go to Prescott. The wonders of fast travel. <laughs> yeah, Flory, flag, flag goes boom, boom. It does indeed. You just got to be very careful with the flag. A little bit too close. Oops. <laughs> Your days are numbered. Your days are definitely numbered. Right, so let's, gee, let's have a look at the freelancer. there chip dealer okay what we got vanguard scout stinger and another vindicator on the three plus again yeah not what we're looking for just yet not yet Helia, nanotechnology okay we're close on that so we'll give it two of the quantum conductors which is nice uh we shall just sell off some of the junk that i've just picked up as well Get rid of that. Get that because it's part of the redemption set. Yeah, guess. Hey Gary, can I can I sneak a question in here? We got you one from can. Facebook. Yes. Awesome. This one comes from Spoofy Allen, I think is how you say the name. Oh Spoofy, yes, <laughs> um, I think on our Discord as well. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Nice to have you in the stream. The question is, it's a double question. Ooh. Are there plans to tune legendaries or make legendary set items? That's the that, that's the question oh right okay yeah. <laughs> I, as far as i'm aware um legendary set items as such uh will not be a thing um the reason being is that the legendaries a lot of them were created you can probably see on the screen right now um that this one was specifically was a backer submission from 10 storms um so if anything set items will stay as they are uh when i talk about set items we'll use the redemption set here um they obviously are something that we've created um, to allow players to have what we would call more horizontal um, abilities within the game, uh, your synergies with other set items, with the ship itself, uh, allows us to uh, give the player uh, a little bit more uh, access to different styles of gameplay. Um, with regards to the legendaries, you can see with the Castiel's protection, that's a very specific item. They aren't always the best, and they don't always suit your build. Uh, similarly, with the uh, redemption set or even any other the set items, they don't always suit the build. So you may find them, but you may have to you know store them, use them for other ships. So specific item sets of legendaries probably not going to happen. Um, tuning them. I don't believe, again, that will come under um, uh, something that we would do. Tuning would probably happen more towards um, set items. Uh, if they're mean in terms of tweaking things, obviously we're always looking at balance uh, and checking that something's not being a little bit overzealous or giving somebody too big a boost. But there are some very powerful items and combinations with the set items and also even using uh, legendaries incorporated into that build, it may just give you that uh, 
that perfect style for, for you because they're very individualistic as well so uh, uh i think that answers everything on that one i think i would say so i would say so and just to kind of top that off um we are looking at doing some more elements to the end game uh, next year in a free content update. And part of this does include looking at and evaluating uh, legendary items in their current state, uh, as well as bringing more into the mix. Mm -hmm. So if you want to find out more information on our roadmap, we do have that information posted on our Discord and our Frequently Asked Questions channel. You can also see it on uh, Steam. We have our posts over there also uh, on our Kickstarter, lots of different locations where we talk on these things. So. Um, but yeah, just to, just to give you a little bit of hope, because we're not going to do legendary set items, do know that there will be new legendaries, and we'll probably look into some elements regarding the current state of legendaries as well to fit it into that in-game formula. Interesting. Interesting times ahead. Freebie. That disintegrator just absolutely melts. It's great. The disintegrator had a lot more uh, knockback mm. whenever we initially created it. And so I remember, I actually remember playtesting it um, with a light ship and just like, <laughs> holy cow, you just, yeah. you just get launched backwards. Yeah. Like, ah, probably a little too much. <laughs> we had to tweak it a little bit more. But uh, we loved making these little nuances that would separate and make each of the item variants a little bit more distinct, mm -hmm. uh, much like the disintegrator from the standard beam laser. So, yeah, it's very, very cool. Very, I do like the the not back, and obviously you feel it more in a in a light or a medium ship than you would in a in a heavy ship, um, because obviously the the mass required. Um, uh, the force to push that mass um, is uh, is a lot higher, but uh, yeah, it is a cool effect. Well done, whoever thought of that. Upper while we're here, do not to. Yeah, all these uh, kind of procedurally generated uh, instances such as search and destroy and that do check out for um, resources because they're usually quite resource rich but yeah it, just as we were talking about there if i use the disintegrator you'll see that my ship does start getting pushed back um it's a very very strong weapon I am so surprised we didn't get a single comment about how all the weapons should technically push us back when fired because we're in space. Yeah. Sometimes um, gamification. <laughs> and so, yes, it, well, technically, in terms of physics, that would happen. However, uh, we do like to think of things being a bit more arcadey, a bit more um, player friendly. If all of a sudden, you know, we had inertia dampeners off all the time and our weapons were pushing us backwards we'd be going in all sorts of directions it wouldn't necessarily be fun for from a player point of view so we're always mindful of that um not only of um uh you know it not been a simulation but it's got to be fun for the player as well so <laughs> god i could imagine that inertia dampeners and the disintegrator and you're flying off in every direction but realism <laughs> Right, where are we heading next? Okay, we can hand that in. So, claim rewards on that. That obviously all goes towards our renown. We'll start building that up to get to the legend uh, in the renown system uh, that we have. Obviously, doing rewards, uh, sorry, jobs will benefit um, you in that essence. So, thermo gun, overcharge shield, optimized cargo, etc. As you go through. So, there's different options on how you can attain gear, obviously, looting and shooting. Or shooting and losing is uh, is the easiest method but if you do spot something within the uh, uh, renown system that you quite like the look of then do uh, keep an eye on that and do some jobs uh, especially from places like Cato Palace or um, even um, 
the hangers, uh, the freelance hangar, etc. If you can get jobs from them, and, and the ones that do pop up on the map as well uh, that are dotted around. I haven't got any at the moment, but um, right. And back to the Drake Passage. Let's head there. Where are we going? Fast forward. Away we go. If you do have any more questions, do get them piling in. Uh, send them over to uh, to Eric Tag Giraffasaur in the chat. He'll collect them and we'll try and answer them the best we can. If there's anything that we can't answer, then we'll try and follow up with the team directly um, and uh, get back to you on that. Uh, probably on the Discord if you want to ask a question there as well. Um, it will allow us to, uh, to follow up with you directly. All the freebies. And through the passage again. Galliano Gate. <laughs> I see the chat over on YouTube. Yeah, Eric's Eric's beatboxing is legendary. Yeah. We, we love it. We love to hear it. Secure container, eh? I can't believe I haven't actually overridden the security measures here for the location challenge, which we're not going to do because I'll leave that for you boys and girls to work out. Right, let's head to the belt. There we go. <laughs> Oh, the Drake music, I think, is some of my favourite music in the game. Just love the guitar. people will disagree and they'll love other uh, other regions and their various soundtracks but yeah certainly the Drake music is uh, is a favourite of me Arrow does a wonderful job did you know we had a soundtrack available as well <sighs> what available. tell me yeah. more oh it's available in all the stores so if you want to get it on GOG you can get it on GOG if you want to get it on Steam you can get it on Steam as a DLC for the package Oof, it's very nice. Go check it out, go check it out. You'll love it, I promise you. Nice curated tracks. For your audio perusal. And there are presumably even more units waiting outside the perimeter. <laughs> the long range dishes Commander Ming Yun spoke of. There are four in this sector. Good. Mark I just read that too. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> no one sees me. <laughs> yeah. Here's one. You need to get close enough for me to apply a wide band frequency jammer. It's done. However, I have left open a back channel should you wish to listen in to live comms from the battle. Sure, <laughs> that might be entertaining. This is key. You will all die for what you have done. It's only oh. fools who die today. You <laughs> deranged merman. I was with deranged merman. I love the insults. Life, love the insults. But you just couldn't resist taking a cheap shot. Grave. 
Okay, we need another radio channel, which I've gone flying past. Too busy looking for stuff, for things. Just out of range, just out of range. You should tell your forces to just give up already. You're the one to talk. Spare your men additional losses and surrender. Never. Especially not to someone who steals our tech. <laughs> what tech? Nobody stole anything, honest. Spotted Adam, well spotted. Right, let's get that last radio jammer. This may go totally wrong. It's you again. You're the jerk that stole our bombs. What the hell are you playing at? Just making sure none of you leave here alive. <laughs> I'll sooner see you burn to ashes. Always hide behind the environment. It's always good. Keep out of the way where you can. Coming for me, but we shall deal with them. Luckily, somebody comes to the rescue. Commander Yun. You did. Exactly. Back 
Indeed, did we get ourselves into? We're doing well. We're doing well. Oh, hello. Are them icy cubes my way. Thank you very much. Oh, we got frozen. One minute they were getting friendly and helping each other out, and the next minute they're blaming each other. All good. We did get a game save there because we did get some uh, splendiferous loot, and that is the pigeon stare. Now, it's one thing uh, I'll just touch on um, with regards legendaries. Uh, it's one thing that we do see crop up from time to time in regards that we only have the ability to allow players to have two legendaries equipped uh, at one time. Um, it is a balance reason. Some people are a little bit um, confused as to why we would only allow two legendaries now you can see that they are at times very very powerful weapons and if we allowed uh, players to you know enable four five six you know a full complement of legendaries no matter how high we, and how hard we put the ai you'd just be able to annihilate things and that would pretty much make the game you know very dismissive it would be just a Yes, a, a power trip for the player, but you'd go through the content so, so quickly. And that's not what we want. We want you to be challenged. We want you to um, have to think about what your ship has on board, what it will um, require for your play style. Um, if we gave you, you know, certainly the, the, the legendaries that we have uh, available, then you would just obliterate that content. So whilst it is obviously a single player game, we still want you to be challenged by that single player environment. So uh, um, that is uh, the reason. Um, some people don't like that, but it is what it is. Um, you know, we want you to think, we want you to work, we want you to be challenged by the game. Um, but if you are a very, very good pilot, like uh, the esteemed Eric is, then you ramp it up to nightmare once you've completed the game at least once. Uh, and on your next playthrough, you'll be very, very challenged. Uh, just to answer the comment of uh, Slorine over on YouTube, yeah. On this playthrough, I am playing on, norm, on normal mode. I do play on hard on my other playthrough, um, but I completely forgot that this one was on normal. <laughs> so that is why this one's a little bit easier. 
I promise the next time I will turn it up a notch. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, right. Uh, oh, God, look at the time. We're going to switch over uh, very, very soon to um, uh, our screenshots and fan art that we've got for, from everybody. I'm just going to go find somewhere nice and uh, safe to dock. We've got a Letho, Letho Starport, which is always nice to head to. Uh, which, if I remember correctly, uh, is that not named after uh, Co Carnage's cat, if I remember correctly, uh, that he unfortunately lost, um, died a, a, a little while ago? Yeah, we uh, Co Carnage being one of the great backers and supporters of the game. Um, and you, you, you do maybe see a certain bean seller, uh, connoisseur within the game, who very much looks like him as well. Right, so we'll get um, docked over at Letho Starport. Uh, that's probably where I started as well uh, after doing that. And then we'll switch over to some screenshots. We've got a, quite a few to, to dive through. If you've got more questions, then please get them in. Either myself or Eric will try and answer them uh, the best we can. Uh, I know that I think there's a, a law question there from Flory, which I'm sure... Eric will have all the answers for because <laughs> he's very much. We got a few questions. Oh, yeah. loving it, loving yeah. it. Good yeah. So whenever you're ready, I'm happy to cool. start slapping them in. Slapping them in. That's that's slapping them in, not slapping me. That's that's okay. But yeah, once Look. we <laughs> once we get dogged, we'll switch over to the screenshots, and we'll fire into those questions as well. Get them all answered for you. Right. This is where I crash and burn straight into the... Go. Dock, dock. It's a wonderful structure, is Lethal Starport. It's huge. Love it. Right, let's get docked. Let's get docked. There we go. Coalition HQ. Indeed. Right, so... Where we were, I'm just going to save over the top of that so I remember the name on that one. That. Right, we're just going to do a, a little switcheroo and then we'll be back in a moment. Bear with us while we get things ready. If you do want to join us over on Discord, there you go. You got the details on there. Discord.gg forward slash Rockfish Games. You can follow us on Twitch if you're not watching on Twitch already. Over on Rockfish Games, we've got the YouTube channel Rockfish Games as well on Twitter, also known as X, uh, Rockfish Games, and also Everspace underscore Game. You can join us there. We are on Instagram too. Yeah, we're down with the kids over there over on Instagram again. Everspace underscore Game, and then if you want to peruse. The Reddit forums are ah, forward slash Everspace game is where you'll find us. But um, yeah, do join us on all those social platforms and don't forget in uh, on Facebook too. And uh, that's where we are as well. Uh, so do join us there. Right. Let's find some screenshots. There we go. There we go. Right. Let me just refresh that. It always goes a bit weird and wonky. There we go. There we go. Marvelous. Right. Here we are. Screenshot time. We've got several to get through. And at the same time, we'll intersperse them with some questions from you boys and girls. So, Eric, fire away. Fire away. First question we've got in the queue comes from Ian Moore from Facebook. Any chance distress calls could occasionally reward with a rare or superior weapon rather than credits all the time? Mm, that would be a very cool thing. I don't know if we've ever discussed that within the team. Eric may know more, but it would be quite a a, a nice option. Um, so possibly something that we could discuss. Um, we do, obviously, like I said, we, we said earlier, we, we like to listen to what people uh, in terms of feedback give us and how they feel that something could be improved. Um, so, yeah, that's a, a possibility. I think we might have to discuss that um, and bring that up because all the feedback that we do get we do collate um you might think that we may not necessarily answer everything directly um but we do listen we do read uh, and we do collate it to then discuss and, and bring up to the team for their perusal and consideration so yes 
Good. Uh, Absolutely. And just to also uh, add one little bit more to mm -hmm. that, um, I did intentionally choose a couple questions here that are a little bit more suggestion like, and I'm going to read them off regardless. Um, but Gary, I'm sure that you can direct individuals to where those suggestions can go um, pretty well, right? Yeah, sweet. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, so just uh, while we be before we go on to the next question, uh, this one is from Cargo Jacker over on the Discord. Doing a nice little loop there. Um, it looks like one of the uh, really a bombers actually that's uh, doing some kind of loop there. Very nice visuals and uh, yes, very, very, very sweet. Right, next up we have this one's from Steam. Uh, I do ch like to peruse the uh, screenshots over on Steam. So if you do post any up, if you take any in game and uh, they appear there, then I will probably see them. So I do like to through there and this one's from zeka 89 over on there obviously a uh, gilbert shot bursting out of the water in their sentinel with uh, a lovely coloration dark silhouette there very very nice dramatic uh, lightning in the background so a very very nice visuals there very nice visuals what we got next eric hit me hit me Wizard Jerry asks, there are some units that do not appear in rifts, such as Outlaw, Zerlia Destroyers, and Retaliator Drone Carriers. Is there any lore behind it, or just a game mechanism? Ooh. Is there any lore to this? Eric, you may have to answer this one. Is there any lore behind Yeah, not really. No? <laughs> no, no. Uh, whenever we were going through the rifts, though, we were kind of being uh, particular about enemies that would be encountered, so this one is far more on the gamified side of things so but uh who knows what we might do when we revamp the end game systems next year mm -hmm. Ooh, interesting times ahead <clears throat> so yes we're uh, working on some nice things which will uh mix things up for the end game uh, i'm sure you boys and girls will will love it when you get to see it so uh so yeah lovely screenshot there from uh, zeka 89 and then we will switch over to another one it comes from our discord and uh spoofy who did ask a question earlier i think they're probably watching on uh, facebook but they're definitely on our discord and this is where it's from uh, a nice elite gmb unit there um with uh looks like he's just about to get eaten up by his um gunship behind him <laughs> which is just going to obliterate it into oblivion so yeah yes very very nice looks like they're uh, they're in a rift as well so uh, very nicely composed very nicely composed so yes any more questions any more questions suggestions Ian Moore asks a uh, question uh, pertaining to, oh, wait, excuse me, excuse me, no, Spoofy Allen ah. um, comments on how there aren't any sets designed around Zerilia Zer or Retaliator and was wondering if we had any plans for having fire or ice type uh, systems for the player to play with. I believe we've had this question uh, a little while ago, um, and I don't believe we're going to do that in terms of specific uh fire or ice i think they're going to retain uh, an exclusiveness to those factions um it'd be nice you know for obviously that uh, effect but with uh, things such as webbing emp um, we have our you know abilities for that player to do a similar kind of effect uh, either a damage over time or uh, freezing them in place with uh, emp or webbing so probably it will stay as an exclusive to those factions. But uh, yes, we certainly hear you. If you do have that suggestion, um, it might be something that we could look at in the future. But uh, yeah, do uh, fire it over to our suggestions as well. We will definitely uh, take those on board. So we'll uh, switch. Yeah, I also... Oh, yeah, please. I, uh, I wanted to wanted to poke in one comment on uh youtube uh boarded frag says i wonder how many of these names eric has butchered the pronunciation on thus far uh, <laughs> that was a, it's a curious comment anyway sorry yeah. more screenshots <laughs> yeah yeah that it's, it's very very difficult i have to say it is very very difficult to uh to read out the uh the the usernames it can be uh you go in kind of feet first. I do it nearly every week when every time we do the stream and I'm like, I really hope I get this right. Otherwise, people are really going to notice. But uh, yeah, fair play to Eric. He's, he's not butchered too many. You know, we'll just get him to spell aluminium <clears throat> from time to time. Anyway, next screenshot. Uh, <laughs> we have from Winged Nightmare over on our Discord again. 
Uh, I love the visuals on this. Obviously, the asteroids behind with the big Colonial Fleet gunship there blasting away with uh, a very venomous looking array of, uh, of weapons. Certainly um, looks very, very powerful. I wouldn't want to be in its way as that comes flying in towards you and uh, hitting you with all that firepower. Uh, a lovely looking screenshot again to... Uh, uh, from Winged Nightmare over on our Discord. Like I say, we do post uh, uh, either on Discord or on the Steam. I even pick out ones from uh, our socials as well because we do get some great uh, um, virtual photographers uh, that post up stuff on our socials as well. Very, very nice work. Next up for a question. Next up for a question as I switch on to another screenshot. Yeah, Bearded Frog asks, when is the physical art book uh, scheduled to release? Uh, we still haven't got a specific date for that yet, uh, Biddy Frog. Um, it's still being worked on. Um, it's going to be awesome. I know you, you're very, very much uh, intrigued in how good it is going to be. I know you've mentioned it before. But it's uh, it's still a work in progress. But again, as soon as we have news on that score, then uh, we'll be uh, letting everyone know uh, that it is available. Uh, it's going to look so sweet. Mm, yes, so sweet. Uh, I know you're very excited for it. So, yeah, just a little bit more patience on that one. Uh, not Sion. Yes, I've just seen your uh, your comment there on uh, Twitch. Uh, so, yeah. Hey, wait, when did I post this? I actually grabbed this one from Steam. So this is from Steam. This wasn't on your um, uh, post on Discord. I found this one on Steam. So, yes, it's from not Sion uh, over on there. Very much uh, I got the vibe of almost like the Green Goblin from Spider-Man. It's obviously very relevant at the moment with the, the latest Spider-Man game out. Uh, but yeah, very, very nice coloration. And then the uh, uh, the alternative colors of the thrusters and the boosters and the secondary lights, etc. there. Uh, very, very nice done. And the depth of field as well gives it complete focus on the ship and uh, not necessarily the destination. So yeah, uh, very, very well done on that one. Very, very nicely done. Switcheroo to a screenshot again. From Cargo Jacker. Very nice one. We don't see many of these. Uh, a little top down uh, look at Vesna Mining Colony, um, which shows the, the massive area that, uh, that it is. Uh, very, very nice. Actually, that is quite a height that you've actually reached. So it's, uh, it's interesting how you actually got there. But uh, yeah, a nice uh, bird's eye view of a Vesna Mining Colony for, for everyone to see. Do we have another question? Lori asks, how did the retaliators get to Keone? Ooh. Yes. How did they get there, Eric? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's it's kind of fun because we, uh, we actually had a little teaser of uh, – sort of hinting at how they could have gone into Keone um, a long, long time ago in a stream in a marquee that was scrolling underneath me at the time. Um, but the long story short is that we have not revealed how. We just know that they have somehow acquired the means to do so. And that is looming out there in the world. Ah, okay, so and these shall find everybody's now going to be looking through the previous live streams looking at the marquee underneath and just seeing how did they sneak what? that in <laughs> where did they mention that <laughs> be interesting to see if anybody can actually find it uh, uh, no doubt it'll be posted up on on the discord it's like i found it this is what they said this is how they did it very good but yeah wonderful screenshot there from from cargo jacker uh, for that nice top down view of uh, vesna mining colony and then we switcheroo to uh, Kegels uh, over on Steam. Um, I was a little bit confused with it. I was trying to work out how whether it's upside down or which way, it was, but this was the way that it was posted up. So uh, it's a wonderful environment. Uh, the the clouds in the background, so so cool. You just want to be able to just fly out. It feels very soft and cottony and and everything. But uh, I love how the ship just matches the parts of the station there that uh, that you can see as well with a nice gold reflective color. But uh, yeah, very different uh, kind of angle of the of the um, of the station that we normally see. Um, but uh, yeah, wonderful, wonderful area. But uh, very, very interesting. Let's switch on to probably one of my favourites uh, of the ones that I've chosen, uh, and this is from Kizor uh, on our Discord. Uh, a wonderful sentinel, looking very menacing there, <coughs> uh, firing off with all the electric sparks from its ultimate. 
Uh, again, one of my favorite ships is the Sentinel. Um, it looks very, very nice. And I, I think it's probably why a lot of people don't actually switch from uh, the starter ship, which we do give you in terms of uh, a Sentinel, um, because they get so used to the play style. And I think it uh, is a very nice looking ship, especially once you get the different front ends and the wings and the uh, engines, etc. I think it looks very menacing and very, very powerful. But yeah, certainly a brilliant screenshot from Kizol there. Uh, any more questions? We had a question that generated both on YouTube and Twitch at almost the exact same moment, <laughs> which was freaky. It came from Bearded Frog and Flory. Okay. And they both asked, will we ever get premium Michael Selects again? That would be cool. That would be cool. Uh, Michael is a very, very busy guy. Um, maybe in the future. Um, I'm sure if if Michael ever gets the time to do them, um, I'm sure we'll obviously want to bring those back in because they're a very popular feature. But uh, yeah, Eric, uh, sorry, Michael's a very, very busy guy um, with lots to do. Um, he does grace us with the presence uh, on, uh, on these streams. Uh, so we're very lucky to have him um in here uh keeping an eye on and being involved as well it's not often the ceo of a company being involved um on a regular basis with the communities so uh, yeah it'd be nice that we could um maybe one day maybe one day we'll see, see. so uh yeah uh, a wonderful chap that he is with us so uh yes a great screenshot there from Kizor. We're going to shift over to one that we may have seen before from shift squared over on steam i know we featured it on um the screenshot showcase before uh, because it's just an amazing expansive shot. Uh, Palermo's wound there, he's taking on the destroyer uh, and absolutely beating it down with a, a gunship. You can tell that because of the four firing uh, ports on it there. Uh, taking a little bit of a beating. I think he's probably just about to destroy it. Um, but uh, an amazing uh, wide screenshot there that. Uh, I think he's very worthy of inclusion of, uh, of anything. It could be a brilliant uh, screenshot as well uh, for, for a wallpaper on your desktop. Uh, if you've got one of those widescreen monitors, because it is a widescreen screenshot, uh, definitely worthy of consideration on there. So uh, very, very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, next up, we have another Sentinel. I'm going a bit on the Sentinel thing. Oh, I've got a Sentinel binge going on with uh, uh, the wonderful shot, this time from Speedy Sam on our Discord. Um looking rather splendid and it there you know it's uh, something you maybe want want to be in the firing line of um with the ultimate crackling off um you know you've got to hit that g key from time and you know now and again uh, i know I, I managed to do it i think once on the stream i thought i'd better throw it in uh, this evening while, uh, while we were flying around otherwise Eric might have spotted that I didn't use the G key or the ultimate. So <laughs> I know I was going to say anything. I, no, <laughs> I know I do like to, uh, to rib Eric a little bit about his lack of uh, use of the ultimates in his ship, but you know, it is what it is. But yeah, a wonderful shot there from, uh, from Speedy Sam. Any more questions? Any more questions? I've got, um, I th I've got one here. We've got one from Steiny Goat. I uh, was wondering if the devs ever thought of adding challenge mode rips or HRAs. Um, and they go on with a suggestion here. Have a specific ship with specific loadout, be it overpowered or handicapped, and try to beat it with that. Oh, very interesting. That, that is a, a great suggestion. Um, something that we could possibly look at in the future. I know, obviously, uh, Eric and, uh, has, has said that we're looking at... Um, altering and improving things in terms of end game uh, in the future uh, but that would be a potentially nice suggestion uh, steiny if you haven't already please do stick it up on our support forum uh, put it up there or uh, if you want to then you can post it up on our steam forums in the suggestion forum there it's very very nice i like that idea i do like that idea uh, so yes definitely definitely throw that one up for us look into it uh, so this one uh, is Wing Nightmare again. Guess what? <laughs> it's, it's another Sentinel. <laughs> uh, this time with the yellow features. Um, very, very nice looking. Streaking across the night sky there. Uh, very, very uh, outstanding Colonial Fleet uh, Sentinel there. Switching over to one that we have from Discord again. Uh, X Infinite. I just love the coloration because I think the the engine color almost matches the background in terms of the nebula and the star as well. Very, very nice coloration. Uh, absolutely superb, that one from X-Infinite. Uh, moving on, because we're 
Didn't realize the time. Look at the time. Where's it go? You're having so much fun. Any more questions or are we running out? Yeah. Does Rockfish own the rights to all beatboxing and can we download them as alternate soundtracks? <laughs> I'm not too sure about all beatboxing, but certainly uh, I think Eric should uh, should release some form of album or go on a uh, world tour with his beatboxing. You know, uh, oh, stop it. London, Paris, Madrid, uh, Ontario, you know, let's go worldwide let's, you know we'll start small and then we'll go global shall we <laughs> you're all crazy oh my gosh <laughs> but yeah wonderful shot there from x infinite uh with uh their uh striker there lovely 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 now this was a very nice ship with a good use of depth of field uh a shot from katundro over on steam um obviously if you've played through certain parts of the game you will come across a ship with this kind of shield on it um, I won't reveal where, just in case you've not seen it, but it is a very nice uh, uh, little mission that you go on as well. But uh, yeah, the effect of the shielding there and uh, uh, the intricate detail on the sides on the front of the ship there uh, with a nice use of depth of fuel, keeping that planet in the background. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Right. Switching along to probably one of the most moody kind of uh areas that we have in the game this one is again from kegels who we had earlier and this one was from steam so uh if you've ventured into this area with regards to the parasite quest or the parasite mission you will know uh, exactly where you are with that and i love how they've done the, the the kind of depth of let me get this right you can't actually see it but the tiny tiny little ship there uh looking like an x-wing no no reference whatsoever um which is uh just showing the scale of the ship that was obviously destroyed in this area. Very, very moody. Very, very Halloweeny as well, which is just around the corner. Just around the corner. So yeah, very, very nice. Any further questions? Yeah, I've got one that I think I can probably just answer as well. Cool. Um, this one comes right. from Nikole Nicole Andreev <laughs> Andrev. Um, have you considered if the different ship parts can buff or nerf specific ship stats? Ah. And uh, the answer to that one is yes. This was actually something that we had considered uh, through the course of early access to diversify ship builds even further. And from our little bits of testing along the way, we were discovering rather quickly that we didn't want to associate specific uh, builds with specific styles. So we actually retconned that feature so that you can play your way with your own style attached to it. Excellent. Love the answer. Love the answer. Uh, this one is uh, another screenshot from Gerard over on our Discord. Uh, recently posted a lovely planet behind that, a gaseous planet, and perfectly, almost, I think he's perfectly aligned down the middle of that planet. That must have taken a quite a while to, to get right. Uh, I know somebody will probably be drawing lines on the screen, making sure everything's perfect, perfectly down the middle and horizontal and everything. But uh, yeah, a lovely composition of a shot. Uh, very, very nicely done. Uh, looking like a, a deadly assassin waiting to uh, take something down and you are their prey. Right, let's whiz through these because we're nearly out of time. Nearly out of time. This one, a very clever shot from Not Scion again. Now, you might be thinking, why is it very, very clever? Well, if you notice that their thrusters, uh, the main thruster is glowing pink, but then it seems like there's a lot of flames emanating from their ship. And I believe they've fired off a cruise missile and then they've just perfectly aligned their ship to make it look like they're, uh, they've got some kind of afterburners going uh, on on their ship, which is very, very well done. Uh, I like their composition to use a, a weapon, a secondary weapon to create that effect. And it looks like that destroyer is going to be destroyed very, very soon if that, <laughs> if that uh, weapon should hit them. Very, very hard. But yeah, Kizzo. Uh, yeah, so the Scion has just confirmed. Yeah, it's a cruise missile. I thought it was very well done, sir. Very well done. Uh, very impressive uh, on that composition. Lovely when they think about it. Right. Into the fan art section. We've got a couple of fan arts here. And this one is, I think we've seen one, this one before, but because it was very Halloween-y, it's like I say, it's just around the corner. Uh, this one has come from the Chemical Bro, uh, who... Uh, created this and i think it was probably at least a year if not two ago uh around this time and i thought i'd bring it back up uh because it's just a great piece of fan art um obviously they're there in the depths of a ship with a nice red filter and the slightly um 
scary, spookily writing of Everspace 2. Very, very nicely composed there again. Uh, we do like the fan art. We've had a, a quite a few uh, coming over time. So if you do create something that isn't necessarily just an out-and-out -out screenshot, then please do submit it. Um, we do like to see it. Uh, it's very appreciative that you take the time to create something from uh, within the game and then add to it as well. And then the last one, which is just uh, just come in in a few days, and I thought it was absolutely exceptional, and I can't not show it again from the Chemical Bro a bit more in terms of fan art, and it is this joyous thing, <laughs> which is myself and Eric in the cockpit of a gunship as the streamers. We <laughs> I, when I first thought, it, I thought are we kind of doing some kind of DJ session in the uh, in the cockpit of the gunship, but that is absolutely fabulous work from uh, <laughs> from the chemical bro. We absolutely love it. We do show it off to the rest of the team uh, as well. Well, it, it isn't just kept on the disco. We do if we see anything like this, me doing the weird hand gesture. Yeah, there we go. Replicate the look. <laughs> uh, you can't see it, but I'm making that face right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eric looks like he's kind of uh, somebody's about to get hit and he's just going to go ooh that's going to hurt and I'm just like boom <laughs> very very good uh, it's a wonderful uh, piece of artwork from uh, <laughs> the chemical bro uh, like I say we, we do like to see these things it is absolutely phenomenal we do appreciate them immensely the time it takes for for people to create them so yes it's uh, <laughs> a very very nice uh, nice image so we are just going to wrap up there. We're, we're past our time uh, quite significantly. Um, one thing that I will just mention before we go is that currently there is the Good Old Games Halloween sale on at the moment, which gives you 30% off. I mean, who would not want that? 30% off uh, until November the 1st. So uh, do check that out over on Good Old Games if you've not already dived in to the world of Everspace. And uh, it's something that we'd, uh, we'd love you to join us on. But... Uh, uh, it's been my pleasure to be your host this week. Um, I know it's a little bit different having Eric on the comms with the, the chat. It's sometimes nice to give him a little bit of a rest and, uh, you know, not talk as much as he, as he loves to do. And uh, But, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Eric, for being on the comms with me as always. Is there anything you'd like to uh, end the stream with? Well, it's been my pleasure to be here with you, Gary, honestly. And and guys, everybody in this beautiful community asking your questions and having some weird conversation from time to time, we love it. We love you guys so much. Thank you for being a part of this incredible journey that we've been on. And we're still going. I am so excited for next steps, uh, next details for us being able to show you once we get there. Um, but just kind of as a quick recap as well, um, for our console players with our update, um, it's still through certification. Um, but as Gary mentioned, earlier we are trying to get that out as soon as possible we're hopeful for next week but we can't make any guarantees um, last but not least uh, for anybody who is not in the know we do have another large free updates coming next year and then we have a massive premium dlc in the works for the future of everspace 2. nice nice uh, that's always what we can look forward to boys and girls and uh yeah we'll look forward to it along with you so keep your suggestions coming keep your screenshots coming uh keep your comments bug reports and everything good or bad send it our way so we can deal with it and help uh us make everspace 2 the best damn space looter shooter that we possibly can uh i've been your host gary this week uh, it's been a pleasure to have you with us hope you can join us in the next one two weeks time remember we're every two weeks now uh but join us on the discords on the socials and everywhere else and we'll see you in the next one take care folks goodbye for now Doodles. Don't stop being awesome. <laughs> Doodles.